This is Will from St. Cloud, Florida. I'm here with Jeff. This is episode 16 of Show Us Your Humvee. Perfect. In Show Us Your Humvee, we feed your Humvee fix with Humvees from around the world. The purpose of this series is to give you a deeper look into cool Humvees than you would get from a few pictures on social media. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly episodes. This week starts with an apology. Last week, I drove from North Carolina to Florida in search of gun factories to tour and Humvees to feature here in Show Us Your Humvee. I wasn't able to edit video while on the road, so episode 16 had to wait until I got back to the office this week. With that, let's dive in and see what badassery I was able to dig up this week. We'll start back in Lumberton, North Carolina to look at a different Humvee from Corey of KPJ Military Customs long before he bought an obscene number of GMV Special Forces Rod Hall Humvees, Corey set off on a quest to rebuild his prime mover Humvee. Here's how Corey describes it. Hi Jeff, I wanted to share a very special version of the Humvees that was made to tow a 105 millimeter cannon, the prime mover as it's called in the TMs. The parts for it are located in the 24P-2 towards the end of the manual. My dad and I own what I believe to be the only one released, and we got it by accident. We didn't set out to buy that version, it's only after we got it that we realized what it was. These were M998 converted trucks with special rear suspension, bumper, and internal ammo rack for howitzer ammunition, camo netting stowage overhead of the two-door crew area, front winch, and more. They look like a plain two-door truck from the outside, but it's what's inside that's different. Take a look at these photos of our truck and video we made of it, and the replica-ish 105mm howitzer that fires propane and oxygen for SimFire. Thanks for the tour of your prime mover, Corey. We really appreciate it. And we're off to Pacific, Missouri to look at Keith's 1994 M998 Humvee Safari Project. The first thing I noticed is that this truck has been coated, well, everywhere. Keith must own stock in Raptor Liner, as he coated the truck in urethane primer, then sprayed green Raptor Liner on the inside and outside of the body and helmet top. Then he sprayed black Raptor Liner on the undercarriage, mirrors, and wheels. Then he powder coated the aluminum X doors, reflectors, grill, screens, and headlight bezels. What do you think? Does it change the look of the truck? There's copious covered space under the helmet top with side toolboxes. This Humvee is powered by a 6.2 liter engine mated to a three speed transmission. Other features include a center console with marine radio and speakers early style angle iron brush guard, 24 volt DC to 110 volt AC inverter, and a newer style thicker steering wheel. Thanks so much Keith for sharing your safari truck. While well, on the road in Florida last week, Will caught up with me in St. Cloud, Florida to show off a decidedly glossy 1994 M998 A1 Humvee. And now for your enjoyment, let's let my ADD drive me around this Humvee and point out random things as they catch my attention. So we'll start with a quick 360 walk around to let you get acquainted with this Humvee. And then we'll dig into the details. For starters, one of the first things that you notice about this Humvee is that it has the military 383 green paint, but Will has put a clear coat over it to make it glossy, and it looks fabulous. I'm not generally a fan of glossy paint on Humvees, but this is really well done and looks absolutely fantastic. You may notice that Will has gone with the black Rhino aluminum wheels instead of the heavy military two-piece wheels and mounted on them 37-inch Maxxis Mudder Buckshot 2 tires.
Here we see LED headlights, a forward facing infrared light, and an LED light over the windshield. Side marker lights are also LED. And did you notice the ECV turbo front clip and the heavy ECV lifting hooks? The two fans you see through the top hood grill are on the condenser for the air conditioner. Will made the custom mounting brackets for his forward facing LED light bar. And what's this we see at the top of the intake stack? That funky shaped intake cover is from a Jeep. And there we have an antenna for the radio. These bolt-on rock sliders are from Jeremy Johnson at Safety Third. And of course, Will has added an American flag because America. If this antenna mount looks a little odd to you or out of place, it's because it's a sugar scoop from a different variety of military vehicle. Please leave a comment if you know what it's supposed to be on. One thing I think is pretty hard to beat from an aesthetic perspective on a Humvee, you gotta have those dual mounted whip antennas. I'm also a big fan of airlift bumpers with tear lift shackles. It really gives an older Humvee a more modern look. Here we see that Will has bedlined the interior, put a toolbox in the back, and created his own custom back wall with a sliding window and American flag overlay. And did you notice that this 1994 Humvee has one of the early style AM General stamped tailgates? Underneath we see that Will's Humvee is rather clean. This little LED light was very cleverly added directly to the license plate itself to provide the required license plate lighting. Tail lights have been updated to the LED variety that's much brighter and more reliable. Now let's take a look at the supplemental armor doors with tinted windows and locking latches. So that's the standard ones. That's what I've had on mine yeah. is that type. And then I put these plates on here, Jeff, because uh -huh. you know how the doors are kind of flimsy? Yeah. Is that uh... Because X doors aren't as rigid and durable as maybe we would like them to be, Will added these steel door skins to get a little better rigidity. Inside the Humvee, we see a custom C pillar that Will created. an inspirational painted logo, and an air conditioner for the rear seat passengers. Moving up front, you see where Will added an air conditioner to the center console, as well as cup holders and an overhead CB radio. The bottom of the steel roof has been bedlined. Now on the passenger side, the data plate confirms it. This is an M998A1. Will's upgraded the front seats to the military high back variety. We see the standard early version of the heater box. Moving back, we see that Will still has the original old school two piece rear seats. Here's another look at that rear air conditioning unit. There's even a speaker set up on the tunnel, some nice rubber mat for insulation. The high back seat has the BMI Molly cover on it, uh, allowing some additional things to be hung on the back. Will had a turret installed initially, but now just has the support ring and B pillars in place to hold the roof up. Here's another look at that custom made C pillar to support the back of the turret support, as well as Will's custom back wall with sliding window. How about a different angle on how the front passenger areas are configured? Oh, look at that, I missed the 12 volt outlet under the center console. And the overhead light. I should have asked if there's a story behind the skull graphics on the inside of the back wall. Let's move up front for a little bit more detail on how Will routed the wires and air conditioning hoses to his center console.
and he even has a cell phone holder mounted on the dash. But he kind of lays the condenser right on top of the radiator, uh -huh. which I spaced mine uh -huh. up off the radiator. And all my lines are all crimped. They're not screwed together. I bought the tool to crimp them. Yeah. So what I did with the rear one is I ran the lines underneath along the frame and then ran them up in the back. And huh. they're all fastened in the frame. There's no flopping around. Yeah. I did it right. That's cool. To prevent those pesky leaks, after Will replaced the turret with a turret plug, he bedlined the top. Let's pop the hood and see how things look under there. To support the air conditioners in the passenger compartment, you see a shiny new aftermarket condenser with two electric fans. And now I'll make some vague circular hand gestures while you take in the view of the engine compartment. Up under on the driver's side, Will's installed an air horn. Would you like to hear it? Ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> if you're curious how all of the various parts of the air conditioning system are mounted, Here's a look at some more of them. Will has a four-speed transmission, taller springs, and bigger tires on his wish list for the near future. Thanks for braving the rain to share your Humvee with the world, Will. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. If you want your Humvee to be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, then send me an email with landscape-oriented pictures or a link to download video of you doing cool stuff in your Humvee, and I'll put it here on Show Us Your Humvee. If you've already sent in pictures or video for Show Us Your Humvee and you still haven't been featured, don't worry. You will be featured soon in the upcoming weeks. I'm just going through the videos in the order that they came in. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range.